Yo, what's up, my fellow artists? It's been way too long, but hey, we're here now, and uh, it's actually kind of cool because this video, we are going to be going over the basic principles of how to shade properly. So we're going to be covering everything from light source to the different types of light to midtones. So buckle up and let's get to it. Now to start off, I want to touch on value. I want you to understand that value is key. Now for those of you that are not familiar with what value is and how to achieve it, I'll briefly go over it. One of the things that I like to do is I like to draw out some quick lines and use these as a guide to practice my pressure control. And rather than holding the pencil like you would normally, try holding it in an overhand fashion. And remember that the harder you push when you're stroking your graphite onto the paper, the darker value you will receive. And the lighter you push on your strokes with your pressure control, the lighter the value will be. Drawings with less value will tend to look flatter, while drawings with more value will tend to pop. And you can practice your pressure control. I like to take a ruler and I like to draw out some guiding lines, much like we did before. And when it comes to this, it's really personal preference depending on how many different shades of value you wish to put in your drawing. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to do four different shades. The first shade is going to be extremely dark so I'm going to press extremely hard onto the paper and really bring out the darkest value that I can. Now by practicing pressure control when it comes to the next shade I'm going to be pressing hard but not nearly as hard as I did in the first shade and so on and so forth. And this is really good for you as a beginning artist because every single drawing that you draw will have certain variances of values in them. And so this is a perfect way to practice and develop that muscle memory and develop your own skills. This is what you want. You want your lines to flow together evenly. This is what you do not want. So this is good. This is bad. Okay, so moving on to shading smoothly. There are some tricks you can use. Uh, one of these tricks is what we just uh, spoke about, eliminating major gaps between your strokes. This will give you a very nice even distribution. I have found that uh, sharp pencils tend to not work as easy. You actually want to use a duller pencil, or you can use a smudger um, if you tend to work with charcoal, um, or you can use uh, charcoal powder, but that is a preference that's completely up to you. Now when it comes to the three other segments that I want to go over. I'm going to create some spheres here real quick. Okay, so next is understanding light. What we're going to do is I'm going to put our light source here. And we're going to draw out how this light is going to interact with our basic shape of our circle here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the center line of this circle. And the side that faces the light source is going to be the light side. And then the side that faces away is going to be the dark side. The line that we just made across the center of the circle is going to be what is known as our core shadow. And then here is going to be our cast shadow. And then in between the circle and the cast shadow is going to be what is known as an occlusion shadow. And I'll show you more of what this looks like here in a second. 
but in this example the dark side is going to be extremely dark so we can we can press much harder and give ourselves that darker value then when it comes to the light side just like we practiced off to the left we want to start out dark pressing nice and even but then as we work our way towards the light source we want to go lighter and lighter still and what this is doing is this is giving us a nice three-dimensional look and this is giving us a form and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush here this is one of my favorite tools and we're going to soften up all of the graphite that we just laid down and this is going to help cement that three-dimensional form that we want and then the occlusion shadow is a dark area between the sphere and the table and then the cast shadow is dark but it's not nearly as dark as the occlusion shadow typically because um, there is little to no light at all hitting the occlusion shadow so what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush here we're going to soften this all up and then moving on there are two types of light that you need to be aware of those two types of light are what is known as directive light and reflective light so as with the first example we're going to add our light source here we have our directive light hitting the circle straight on and then we have our uh, reflective light hitting the table and then reflecting off the table and shining onto the circle itself so of course we have our equator line or as I like to call it um, the reference for our core shadow line and then one of the little tricks that I like to do is I like to draw a little half sphere where I know the light is going to be predominantly hitting the circle and that's my personal preference there you don't have to do that if you don't want to it's just something that I found works for me and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be layering on the dark side of the sphere much like with the first and then we're going to be starting dark on the side away from the reflective light and the direct light and it's important to note here that you can always um, add more graphite then we're going to take our brush we're going to fluff this all up soften it up I love the brush because I can move a lot of graphite very quickly and uh, it gives me a really nice effect that I enjoy but here if you soften it up and you still don't like what it looks like you can always add more graphite then I'm going to take my mono is zero this is one of my favorites and I'm just going to give it a different texture from the first sphere all right and then moving on to midtones now midtones are important because they start from the core shadow and then move their way up towards the core light and as we get closer to the light those midtones gradually get lighter and lighter it's important to note that core light which is much like directive light and highlights which of course are reflective light um, will play to your midtones but understanding that midtones start at the core shadow is really all you need to worry about because that is where the value that you're going to be working with is going to be the darkest you don't have to worry about adding too much because that core shadow is going to be the darkest now as you move towards the core light you are going to gradually lay down less and less graphite and your values are going to become lighter and lighter and this is one of the reasons why practicing making the smooth transition from dark to light values is really going to shine through for you when it comes to the actual application but many artists will be the first to tell you that midtones can be tricky one of the reasons why we use circles and transform them into spheres with value and giving them depth and dimension is because it's a much easier concept to understand than see if we were to draw a nose or a face understanding principally what the core shadow is versus the cast shadow versus the occlusion shadow versus what's the light side what's the dark side you know there's directive light there's reflective light there's core light and then there's highlights in regards to midtones understanding these basic core principles of being able to shade will really enhance your own repertoire 
But in regards to these mid-tones, notice how I am keeping to the core shadow first and then I am branching out from there, both working away from the core light and especially towards the core light. Now the cool thing with drawing is don't ever think that what you've laid down into the paper, unless you've overworked the paper, is permanent. A lot of times if you just lay down each application lightly, you can go in, say like what I'm doing here with the Mono Zero Eraser, and you can lift out a lot of that graphite. Remember what Bob Ross said, there's no such thing as a mistake, we just have happy accidents. And there you are, voila. So that's it guys. And those are the fundamental principles when it comes to shading that you can utilize in your next drawing. Um, be sure to give it a try and let us know if it worked for you. So I guess that is it. That is all I got for you guys this week. And remember, if you guys find yourself enjoying these videos and you find yourself enjoying all the videos that we make here at Messer Creations, uh, you should definitely like and subscribe. Uh, oh, and be sure to hit the bell. Ding! <laughs> so you guys can be notified when our latest and greatest videos come out. My name is Brayden, and you guys have just been tipped off. I hope you guys have fun and uh, I will see you in the next one.